So everybody's notes are functional money in this economy. There's no gold or silver backing our dollar. So notes with a live wedding signature are functional money. And that's fine and good in a limited sense. However, when you go to foreclose on somebody, you better have that original note, that original mortgage, and all the assignments. Judge Arthur Shack will tell you that, and so will many others. Uh, downtown is the, the true east west line. Right. But this is the real east west. This is the west side, that's the east side over here to my right. And we're going north now, Martin Luther King. And I understand you did some development work in the area at some point? Correct. Over my left hand shoulder, Union Square. Mm-hmm. And uh, all historic redevelopment. Uh, we did green building, actually, green, green redevelopment. And uh, the market fell out. Sure. And we were doing historic tax credits on our property. So we were selling when nobody else really could. And even with historic tax credits, it was just it, the market totally fell out for historic property. What year did this uh, start developing? About four years ago. Oh, really? Oddly enough. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Thomas P. Door, I was looking sweet 400. They said he moved to 200. No. On a uh, foreclosure action, the people at the state of Maryland were in my website at Mortgage Movies and also in Mr. Wetzelberger's web- website immediately. So I was kind of curious as to how that could happen and why. And I thought maybe it might have something to do with it because of the fact that uh, the state is so heavily vested in mortgage backed securities. So anyway, I'm just trying to follow up on that. And I'll leave my card here, Mr. Door. We're here at KingCast.net Mortgage Movies, and that's the receptionist for foreclosure mill attorney Thomas P. Dore. She's a little bit under the weather because, uh, well, he's always involved in something shady. There we have the notaries that uh, resigned uh, under his advisory ambit. And see, Thomas P. Dore is one of the lawyers that represents M&T Bank, and they administer the trust and pension funds for the state. Uh, that allows them to get away with bloody murder, in my opinion. We have some documents there where they're trying to foreclose on someone, and they're you know, they've lied about everything. The agent was not there at that time because there was nobody home then. We own the house. Emmett T owns we, it. We? That's you? I you, could you just, be. You just said we, right? Yeah. I could what? be. Read the number Get on the one. camera out my face. No private property, right. You have an oath and a bond? Where's your oath and bond, law enforcement guy? Listen. <laughs> All right, listen. I don't know exactly what's gone wrong in your life to bring you to this point, but somehow or another you wound up watching another King Cast mortgage movie. Enjoy. Unfortunately, this is nothing enjoyable uh, whatsoever. Look at Mr. Wetzelberger's uh, counterclaim in the timestamp, 1046. Notice in my notice of media coverage to Attorney Dore, as you'll see there, the state of Maryland, was it on the website? At exactly 11, 12, just 26 minutes later. Then the FTC joined the fray. Why? Then he complained to Zenaida Dorsey about various transgressions and thinks he's witnessed illegalities uh, on the part of Thomas P. Dore and other people, including uh, state congressmen, that have been ignored. And she comes out and, you know, filed a complaint against him for something that he probably didn't do. And uh, meanwhile, has ignored all of his complaints. And she told us, you know, they made us turn the cameras off. And she told us that it was just a coincidence that she was in there that day, uh, half an hour later, researching us in my website and uh, in his website. Who believes that? I don't. Mr. Wetzelberger, he filed a complaint, a uh, counterclaim against Thomas P. Dore, who's an attorney for M&T Bank. Now, M&T Bank administers um, the pension funds here uh, for the state of Maryland. And uh, the minute that he did that, uh, actually 27 minutes later, yes. Oh. Mr. Wetzelberger. Uh, Hunt Valley, Maryland, Executive Plaza 3, Suite 400, which is where I served the uh, counterclaim at the time. So we now know what? They moved. To 200? Suite 200, correct. Terrific. We'll go down there now. Yep. Okay. Well, um, but this is his office, Thomas P. Dory's office, correct? This is Thomas P. Dory's office, correct? No. Oh, wait. Kobe, Boozer, Devin, and Dory. All visitors must sign out. So this, there is a Dory here. This is his office, correct? 
We're good. Okay, not to worry. I mean, I'm not. I mean, I just see that that's his office apparently. So, what I'm going to do though is, um, I'm going to leave something with you. I'll just leave my card, uh, Christopher King, Mortgage Movies. I'll leave that with you there. Yeah, I'm just curious because what happened was I'm, I'm following a case with Mr. Todd Wetzelberger, and uh, it's my research indicates that approximately 27 minutes after he filed a, a, a cross claim on a uh, foreclosure action, the people at the state of Maryland were in my website at Mortgage Movies and also in Mr. Wetzelberger's web website immediately. So I was kind of curious as to how that could happen and why. And I thought maybe it might have something to do with it because of the fact that uh, the state is so heavily vested in mortgage-backed securities. So anyway, I'm just trying to follow up on that. And I'll leave my card here. Mr. Dory can uh, contact me. Thank you very much. Recently, with Mr. Wetzelberger, he filed a complaint, a uh, counterclaim against Thomas P. Dore, who is an attorney for M&T Bank. Now, M&T Bank administers um, the pension funds here uh, for the state of Maryland. And uh, the minute that he did that, uh, actually 27 minutes later, yes. Oh, sorry. Face that way. So the, the minute after he did that, 27 minutes after he did that, uh, it, it turns out that um, the, the, someone from this building right here, from the Department of uh, Labor, uh, was on my website, Mortgage Movies, and was on Mr. Uh, Wetzelberger's website as well. And so we're concerned about that because there's a financial element, a huge financial element involved in foreclosure. Uh, not only are, are the uh, municipalities heavily vested in mortgage-backed securities, there's another angle that Mr. Wetzelberger and I were talking about that, that raises a, a question as well. Sir, do you want to discuss that? One of the biggest ones is that um, if you um, research the state pension fund, M&T Bank is the operating accounts for them, and there's probably, I don't know, hundreds of millions of dollars that go through go through those accounts. So M&T has a vested interest, and I just sued M&T Bank. So um, I think it's ironic, exact same day I sued M&T Bank, that a uh, subpoena issued from the DLR to me, um, I have no idea why, they won't tell me, and I've been trying to get answers, and nobody will tell me what's going on. A subpoena for what? They're, they're now attacking you? Because... Yeah, they're, they're somebody somebody uh, apparently made a uh, um, complaint that I'm offering credit credit rescue services without a license, and it's all a sham and a fraud, man. Nobody will tell me what's going on. It's all a scam. So I wrote back to Ms. Uh, Dorsey here at DLLR, please show me the complaint, or we can't do that. It's private. I said, well, how can I respond to your request? If you don't tell me what the complaint's about, it's a nonsense. So I wrote back a second letter, no response. Um, I asked him to look into the crimes of uh, M&T Bank and Thomas P. Doerr, no response. Um, pretty much no response all the time. And the, the, the biggest disturbing thing is that the Maryland State Pension Fund, all the judges in the state of Maryland participate in the pension fund. They're all fully vested in the pension fund. And then, but the, and then the other thing that serves about the money that's involved in foreclosure is uh, the way that these uh, mortgages, the way that the notes rather are securitized, they're separated from the, the mortgages, and then they're sold. Actually, when I was a title insurance producer, I never realized it, but that note was pretty much sold before the homeowner ever signed it. Signed it. That's correct. And and to that point, uh, I've got cases and cases, especially down in Virginia, where a half million dollar note. It's probably one of the other videos was sold and generated about ninety one million dollars for Deutsche Bank. So everybody's notes are functional money in this economy. There's no gold or silver backing our dollar. So notes with a live wedding signature are functional money. Look at a dollar bill in your pocket, it's the same thing, it just has bigger zeros. Your notes are money, they're sold multiple times. So a half million dollar note in a Virginia case generated ninety one million dollars. All offshore money going right out of the country. Deutsche Bank, all offshore, no taxes paid, uh, none of the national debt was paid down. All outside the jurisdiction of the US, if there was any fraud involved, you can't prosecute them because it's outside the jurisdiction of the United States government. But of course, we all know that it's, uh, you know, the so-called illegal aliens are the cause of the economic downfall of this country. <laughs> right. It's all political maneuver, exactly. Yeah. Thank you, sir. You're welcome.